What's half demon, half alien, and all privacy? Stay tuned. Secure Ninja. We are at an undisclosed nightclub in Las Vegas, and I'm speaking with Ija, the founder of Demon Saw. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you so much for having us at this fantastic party, which is all for promoting Demon Saw. Right, right. It's uh, well, it's, it's the Demon Saw 3.0 launch party, awesome. and uh, every year we launch a new version of Demon Saw. At least we have the last two years, and this is our opportunity to say thank you to really all the DEF CON crowd and especially to thank the goons and the staff and the press and, and, and all the people that make DEF CON as awesome as it is. I mean, without their, their support and, and their tireless effort, it would not be nearly as cool as it is. So, so it's really t for two reasons. It's to support the new product. And uh, John and I wanted to thank as well. Um, we're also selling some t-shirts and all money is donated to the EFF. So it, it's a cool opportunity to raise money and also support a really good group that's fighting for hackers and our rights as individuals. Absolutely. That's so sweet. You're, you're talking about the EFF, even though we're, we want to talk to you about Demon oh, Saw. No, that's okay. And then John, casually, he's talking about John McAfee. And you're actually the CTO of John McAfee Global Technologies. That's Tell right. me about your partnership with him and about Demon Saw and about how all of this came together. Well, well John, John's a very unique individual, as you guys are aware. And he has a very unique past. And, and my past is, is almost the opposite, almost polar opposites. I don't even have a parking ticket. So uh, I, I grew up, I, I went to Arizona State University. Uh, at the time, it was the number one party school. And I got an undergraduate and a master's degree there, and not once did I attend a party. So when it comes to like polar opposites, you know, John's the total opposite of me. Uh, but what's important and what unites us is the fact that we both believe the same thing about privacy. We believe that we've lost something very dear to us, and both of us are fighting um, with all of our breath to bring it back, to restore privacy, freedom, and personal liberties, and individual rights to all of us and so together we we uh, we came together and uh, and we formed in, uh, MGT and uh, we're working on building out the next generation of software platforms application that will that will allow us to break free from the cloud and break free from applications that that backdoor us and uh, and don't compensate us accordingly or take accountability when they get hacked so it's really about allowing us to be personally responsible for all of our personal data when we don't I mean let's face we don't need other companies to protect us. And that really is the focal point, and our focus is uh, set everyone free. Um, I am the only one that I need to protect me, and you are the only one that you need to protect you. And we should have software that's easy to use, secure, and does just that. Right. That's very empowering. And I know you believe passionately about this cause. You're like, you know, created everything for But tell me, like, from a technical standpoint, dial it back, what exactly is the Demon Saw platform? Well, the best way to really think about the Demon Saw platform is it's a, it's a secure and anonymous private cloud and VPN. So it provides secure chat, messaging, and file sharing right now, but it's a secure layer on which you could send any data. You could do file synchronization, you could, uh, you could uh, do, uh, do VoIP or audio chat, you could also implement a Tor-like uh, network routing functionality, and you can even secure insecure uh, applications and protocols like traditional email and web browsing. So it really has the potential of sending any ones and zeros. I mean, d data looks the same when it's transferred over the wire, whether it's a chat or whether it's a, a one gig file. And, and so the idea with Demonsaw is let's give individuals the ability to share and communicate securely without relying on any centralized infrastructure. And, and Demonsaw's network really looks like the internet. And when you think about the internet that we all use and love, it's not centralized, uh, it's a very decentralized network. There's no state maintained at all. There's a series of routers that blindly forward our packets, no matter what they are, whether they're email or whether they're web browsing. Demonsaw's designed the same way, just at a much higher level in the stack, the OSI stack. And because of that, it allows us to get very creative and make all of our browsing look like traditional web browsing. So we can we kind of fool firewalls and we kind of do exciting stuff. But the most important thing is I want you and I to not have to rely on companies or governments to protect us. We don't need them anymore. Right. That's fantastic. And I understand that you actually 
talking about you know Demon Souls, this, Demon Souls, that. But you actually wrote every line of code for Demon Souls. I did. I uh, well, you know, I'm a senior programmer. I was a senior programmer at Rockstar Games and American Express, and uh, I've done a lot of programming in the last 15 years, and uh, I've gotten pretty good at it. It's it's my passion. It's what I love. So writing code for me is the easy part. Uh, you know, the tough part is the analysis, the architecture, the design, um, interfacing, finding out what people need, and uh, and coming up with a vision of what the future is going to look like with respect to privacy needs and rights and, and how we're going to continue to set us free. And, and so uh, writing the code is, is relatively easy, but I, I did write it all. And uh, now in my new role, I'm, uh, I'm hiring a team. So uh, I'm looking for really strong C++ programmers to hire people that uh, perhaps are hackers uh, or, tech, uh, or technologists or programmers or advocates of privacy and personal rights. And uh, you know people that believe in what John and I believe and believe that we don't need governments and companies uh, to babysit us anymore. And we, we sure as heck don't need them to take our personal data and get hacked and not be accountable and betray us in the process. It's just the time has come for change and, uh, and, and this is what we're doing. Right. And I know a lot of a lot of this effort is all about getting the word out there, which right. is what this party's right. about. But how can our viewers learn more about Demon Saw or download the platform? Uh, well, the best place to go is go to demonsaw.com. Um, you can also reach out to me on Twitter at demon underscore uh, that's uh, demon underscore saw. Um, you can also read uh, about uh, documentation and uh, tutorials. There's a lot of tutorials on YouTube. We're also building out docs.demonsaw.com that's going to have in-depth information. We are launching Demon Saw 3.0 tomorrow, which is a brand new. You're probably going to ask about that, so I probably jumped the gun on that. So I'm not. I'm going to stop and let you ask that. Uh, but there, there's docs.demonsaw.com and demonsaw.com and, and demon underscore saw at Twitter are the best places to reach me. Okay. Um, you can also email me directly, eja at demonsaw.com, E I J A H. So I respond to all mails and all tweets uh, as, as best as I can. Um, I, I want to make sure people can get direct access to the dev. It's always been important with me. I, I think if somebody takes the time to download my software and try it out and see it as a potential fit for a need in their life, the least I can do is take the 15 seconds to respond to them and answer their questions. So I, I know that's hard. As the software gets used more and more, it's becoming more and more difficult. But uh, you know, there's plenty of time that I can take, and I really want to be engaged with the community. That's amazing. That's wonderful. And then one last question. Um, John McAfee, like he's very well known in the media, obviously. Right, right. How did you and John McAfee hook up to, to get in on this together? Well, it was, it was at the Hack Miami conference uh, about a year and a half ago. And I was speaking on something related to Demon Saw, basically setting you free, you know, breaking you free from, from ISPs knowing what you're doing or, or governments monitoring and backdooring your communications. And, and John was there. He gave one of the keynotes. So I thought, you know, John's pretty cool. He believes in privacy. Let me pitch this idea to him. And I almost didn't do it. Like, what I've learned recently was that the biggest accomplish accomplishments in life are always right after a moment of doubt where we almost don't do something. Right. And so some, some, something uh, tells us to continue. We do it and amazing things happen. And this was one of those moments where I thought, no, I'm not gonna bother him. I'm sure he gets a lot of people who want a picture. I'll just leave him alone. And one of my friends from Miami, the Hack Miami team said, no, go talk to him. So I went up, I pitched my idea in about 10 seconds. He loved it. He said, you and I have to work together. You're one of the brightest minds I've ever met. You know, you're an amazing programmer. We're gonna make something happen. And then I thought, you know, I thought, well, he's just being nice. And uh, and within an hour, he had called my phone. Now, keep in mind, I did not give him my number. Wow. <laughs> so he had called my phone, and he, and he was calling from an Alaska number. Uh, so I thought, who's calling me from Alaska? I don't know anyone in Alaska. And uh, he called me, and he's like, uh, did you speak to my team yet? And you know, I was talking to a reporter at the time. I was like, "No, I'm, you know, having a, a, I don't, a martini or something, drinking. You know, talking to a reporter. I haven't done that yet." He's like, "Call him now." And so thus began the journey with John McAfee, where and, and our relationship and our partnership has just grown. You know, at first he was an advocate, and 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 uh, he spoke on behalf of Demon Saw, and he was a believer in the technology. And now it's grown to be he's my CEO, and I'm his CTO and we have a company together, and we have shareholders and a board of directors, and, and we have an enterprise product that was launched, uh, launched and announced a, couple day, or announced a couple days ago called Clear Skies, which is the first enterprise product that is powered by the Demon Saw tech, but it's focused on the business. Okay. You like that name, Clear Skies? I do. Well, it's a, a, I, we were, I was told growing up that every cloud has a silver lining. 
And I, I don't think the cloud accurately represents our data needs and our information security needs anymore. I think it's dark, I think it's dismal, I think it's, it's overcast, and I don't think that's the, the type of environment we need or want. I think we need clear skies. We need the clouds to go away. And, and so it, it all comes down to that question, to cloud or not to cloud, that is the question. Absolutely. Some people do need the cloud, and it should be secure, and there should be end-to-end -end encryption. And there will be a future of an end-to-end -end encrypted secure cloud for MGT. That will absolutely happen. But right now, we need a cloudless solution at the enterprise and consumer level. We need a demon saw for businesses. But we need something that's designed for those businesses that want to break free from the cloud and can. We need the right software at the right time that's empowering to individuals to allow them to be their own authorities. And I created that in Demon Saw and it's evolving every day and the community's embraced it and been very supportive and I'm humbled more and more. Uh, the more people use it, the more I'm humbled because it was just a crazy idea that I had three years ago working for Rockstar Games while working on GTA 5. You know, these crazy ideas, everyone thought it was, was nuts and I kept, I kept focusing on it. And slowly it became this awesome thing that people are thanking me for and using it. But I remain humble because I'm just like everybody else here. I, I, I need privacy, you know, I'm, a, I'm an emotional creature like all of us. And I'm just trying to enjoy life and do the best I can and, and you know, not be enslaved by governments and companies. I, I just want to be free. Well, you, <laughs> you radiate such passion for what you're doing, and I hope that our viewers pick up on that. I'm Thank sure you. they do. We, you know, Security TV, we interviewed you last year at DEF CON, but the, we had some failures, audio failures, so we're very happy to speak with you again and get the word out about Demon Saw. Oh, well, it, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much, Alicia. And we'll definitely follow up and see where things go. Well, you know, yeah. we'll be at DEF CON next year, obviously, and all that good stuff. Uh, anytime you guys want to chat, I'm here, so thank you. Love you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this episode from DEF CON 24. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you thought of the episode and also if you were at the conference this year or if you intend to go in the future. Also, if you haven't subscribed to Secure Ninja TV, be sure to do so with the red subscription button below. And we'll see you in the next episode. I'm Alicia Webb. Bye.